in the flesh what he's doing in the spirit. There's unique people in the spirit like there are unique people in the flesh. There's people in the spirit that are begotten of God. <laughs> They're a unique generation. But here's why they've been chosen. To show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, this, so what does this mean, to show forth his praises? Like, what does that mean? Well, it does involve you showing forth his praise, that they come out of your mouth and through your, through your life. But it also involves holy angels who behold you and <clears throat> see you as the work of God. They are your ministers, you know. God has assigned the angels to be ministers of those who are the heirs of salvation. And their angels are astute observers. Yes, amen. They see what's going on all the time. And when they see the way you think mm -hmm. and how you want to please God, and how you're willing to forfeit the things of the world. And how you hunger and thirst after righteousness. They praise God. There's such a thing as this is found in people that were members of a fallen race. They praise you. You're showing forth. You're, a, you're like a trophy. You're an exhibit of what grace can do. Yes, Some amen. people think of grace as kind of, it's kind of a, a mamby-pamby and soft and tolerant and all oh, no, grace is potent Amen. by the grace of God I am what I am Amen. that's the man that said that went from persecuting the church condoning the death of Stephen and persecuting the church to laying down his life mm -hmm. so that people of God could be nourished see what, what made such a change is that grace made him what he was see grace is potent and, and powerful mm -hmm. to show forth his praises mm -hmm. who called you out of darkness where you didn't know anything, didn't understand, couldn't see things as they are, into his marvelous light, wherever things made plain. See that not everybody gets this, brother. We we know this, but it's just good to, good to emphasize this so we know what what a privilege we've been given. Yes, not because of anything we've done. This is something God did. He's the one that chose us. Mm -hmm. And he didn't choose us because we chose him. Right. Jesus told his disciples, You didn't choose me. I chose you, as John 15, 19. And I, and I ordained you that you should bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask, you'd receive. See, God said, Jesus said that. I did that. Same with you. Let's look at this a little further. I'm showing there's a preferred people, peculiar people, preferred people. Here's 1 Peter 3, 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Over who? The righteous. And his eyes are open unto their, pray unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. All right? We've had national tragedies. Mm -hmm. We've had like a whole city inundated by water. It's true they built their city beneath sea level, but we'll, we'll overlook that for the time being. It's also true that their city is a citadel of gambling yeah, and right. vice. Uh -huh. hmm? That's also true. And you think just because they're people, just because they're Adam's offspring, that God's open, ears open to their cry? You'd think so, wouldn't you? But I'll tell you, after the city's restored and the first thing they build is the casinos, I'd be scared to live in New Orleans. What I'm showing you here is that the eyes of the Lord aren't, over, aren't watching over everybody. People say, why do, why do bad things happen? Well, that's a dumb question. It's not even a legitimate question. They should be asking, why don't more bad things happen? That's what they should be asking. They should say, given, given this, the, the stance of our particular country and the way we've come out against God, and so we're even thinking about removing words like in God we trust. We're, even, we're thinking about we don't want God's, God's law be, to be visible anywhere or anybody to say the name of Jesus in the public. I say the question is, why isn't there more? Why aren't there more hurricanes? Huh? Why aren't there more tsunami waves? It's just because God's been long-suffering. He's, he's, he's waiting for people to respond, uh -huh. respond to him. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears open to their cry. See, if you're not righteous, it's really not right to expect God to answer your prayer unless your prayer is to be merciful to you yeah. Amen. because you're a sinner. Right. 
Now that, God will hear that kind of prayer from a, from a sinner, understand. Now works, uh, God works within certain people. He doesn't within others. Remember, we're talking about peculiar people. Philippians 2.13, it's God that works in you both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. So it's God works so you want the right thing and you do the right thing. Yeah. That's special people, not peculiar people he works in. But if you're in Christ, you're in this category. Here's another, Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. That's a peculiar that's a peculiar people, the people whom God peculiarly works. Now, I want to say a few other things and, and close, this, close this out. God has <clears throat> made the church to be a habitation for himself. God wants a people among whom he can dwell. Not visit, dwell. So Ephesians 2.22 describes the church as a habitation built together as a habitation for God through the Spirit. Now some people, they're big on making the church friendly. Well now, understand, the people of God shouldn't be unfriendly. I think we understand this. It's not, it's not a virtue to be uh, unfriendly and hateful. But the church is not about you being friendly. It's about God being able to dwell among us so that he's not offended by what he sees. Like in Israel, see, in Israel he was offended. He had to withdraw. It was so bad he had to withdraw. There were some places Jesus had to just leave. He's in the land of Gadara. He just had to leave. Couldn't say there was a time he had to leave the temple as well as go into it. See, And he told Israel, your house is left desolate. I'm leaving now. See, But that's not why the church is here. The church is to have a place where God can reside, right here among us, a preferred people. And if you wonder about the application of that on a personal basis, don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Now, is that, that's peculiar. <laughs> Everybody's body is not a temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't you know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? You are not your own you really don't have a right to live just for yourself. Yes, amen. You've been purchased with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, mm -hmm. which are God's. That's a peculiar people, see. Someone is uniquely for the Lord. And here's one other thing. <clears throat> it's always an advantage to be peculiarly God's. It's, it's never a disadvantage to be that way. So I, so I would uh, ex urge you and exhort you to do everything in your power to improve God's view of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's critical. Because mm -hmm. if God favors you, God's for you. Who can be against yeah, you? Huh? And it all hinges mm -hmm. on your attitude toward Christ mm -hmm. and your sensitivity to him.